G'day guys, how are you going? Today we are back with a review and this time we're looking at the T34. That is right, I want to do some reviews of some older tier 8 premium tanks and this is probably the most prolific on the battlefield because a lot of you know when the T30 was introduced at tier 9, um, this T34 was actually given as a premium tank to a lot of people. Of course it's been the premium shop for almost forever and it's a really good credit maker so this tank is, uh, has got its place in World of Tanks. And of course today I would like to review it so let's start off by going straight into the history. So the T34 is a modernization of the T30 heavy tank which itself is a modernization of the T29 heavy tank which we all know sits at tier 7 in World of Tanks. Now the T34 was equipped with a new 120 millimeter T53 cannon and the new Continental AV1790 engine. So this was quite revolutionary for its time. Two prototypes were made and tested in field trials though due to the decline of heavy tanks and their um, introduction into the world really after World War II the T-34 was never actually placed into service but as I said guys it was actually built. So let's now have a look at the top three and the bottom three quirks. So the top three quirks are that this gun has a huge amount of penetration at 248 millimeters. You don't need to fire very many premium rounds at all. And although you can see tier 10 games, you can pretty well, you can do pretty well, I should say, with that 248 millimeter penetration. And if you want, you don't really have to struggle too much because the APCR rounds or the premium rounds have 297 millimeters of penetration, which is just absolutely huge, monstrous. So you won't have any trouble penetrating tanks in this tank, I can almost guarantee it. Now, it also has a pretty indestructible turret front, which is combined with really, really good gun depression, means it's a very, very versatile ridgeline warrior. You do not have to worry too much about the turret of this tank being penetrated. Um, as I said, well, as I will mention anyway, it's got a little cupola at the top, but this is very hard to hit, guys. And we'll go through the armor schematics very, very soon as well. And also, the tracks mounted on the front of the tank act as spaced armor. Again, we'll get into that, but that's also pretty special in my opinion. Now, the bottom three quirks of this tank is that the hull armor is quite shockingly bad. Now, these two areas here act as um, extra armor, but it's still really, really bad. Again, we'll get into that. And despite its large alpha damage on its gun, it has a really, really bad DPM. Um, with gun handling as well, leaving so much to be desired. Without further ado guys, let's get into the brand score of this tank. Now the DPM of this tank is a pretty low 1600, so it gets a 5 out of 10. The penetration of the tank, as we said, is pretty good at 248 millimeters, so it gets a 7 out of 10. The gun handling on this tank, so the shown dispersion value of this tank is 0.35, giving it a 3 out of 5, and the hidden dispersion value of the T-34 is 0. 0.26 giving it another 3 out of 5. Now aiming time wise the aiming time of the tank is 3.2 seconds giving it a 5 out of 10. Gun vertical movement wise the gun depression of the T-34 is 10 degrees giving it a 3 out of 5 while the gun elevation isn't amazing at 15 degrees giving it a 2 out of 5. Survivability wise well the turret armor of this tank is something that almost all tanks Envy, and I mean this guys, it can definitely withstand pretty much all guns from all tiers, even with premium rounds. And although it does have a Coppola weak spot, which I'll show you in just a second, it is still very difficult to penetrate, and when the T-34 is hulled down, good luck penetrating its turret guys, it is a pretty big behemoth of a turret. Now. Its hull is a different story. It is uh it's it's bad to to say the to say the least. Only some tier tanks will tier six tanks will have a, a struggle of a time to get through it. Um, and almost tier set almost all tier seven tanks, I should say, will be able to go through it pretty damn easily. So I'm giving this tank a seven out of ten for armor, but I'm gonna show you exactly why in the armor schematics. So having a look at the turret and the, the tank in general, we can see that it isn't uh, it isn't very well armored on the hull. You can see that it's got this massive gun weak spot here, which if we look at the visual model, you can see uh, <laughs> if it decides to load up. There we go, you can see that there's a little gun port here, and this is a weak spot in itself, so anything can go through that, guys. It's only 83 millimeters of effective armor, so yeah, if you if you think you're gonna struggle getting through the armor, just shoot at that. But otherwise, guys, we can see it's got these two spots here, which you could see if you looked before that they were the tracks. They had a little bit of armor, but honestly, it's still not very much, and if you shoot anywhere else in the hull, 
you're pretty much guaranteed to go through. Don't shoot at the lower plate. You don't have to, <laughs> but, and, and you do, uh, you, you know, you do lean, lend yourself up to ricocheting off there. Now you can see, guys, as well, that this is space armor, so technically it can act as space armor, but it's not very much, so don't rely on this thing. Also, its side armor is pretty horrific at 76 millimeters, so you know you can try side scraping, but don't bother just go hold down in this tank because look at the turret the effective armor values are huge going up to 1500 there i mean incredible um the top of the tank can be overmatched though do be careful by 122 millimeter guns so you know don't try not to get shot down at this angle for sure but when this tank is hulled down with it using its 10 degrees of gun depression you are not going to go through the hull of this tank it, it is just not going to happen so that is something that can be uh, that you can look forward to if you have this tank or if you are thinking about getting this tank its turret armor is just incredible also it's got this uh, random little spot here where it's uh, very heavily armored so if you shoot at the back of this tank do not shoot this the, the rear of the tank because honestly you are you, you can uh, you can definitely bounce it's surprisingly armored I'm not sure what's there probably a counterweight I would think to the front but yeah just don't shoot there guys otherwise yeah just try not to shoot the turret in general unless you got the side of it but in that case you might as well just shoot the hull so back on to the brand score now now having a look at the mobility of this tank the power to weight ratio is a pretty low 12.44 giving it a 2 out of 5 and the average traverse speed of the tank is 20 giving it another two out of five the turret traverse on this tank is very very slow guys don't be fooled it is a, not a very mobile tank in the slightest now the view range of this tank is 380 meters giving it an eight out of ten and the camouflage value of this tank is a pretty shocking 3.93 i mean it's not surprising because you know it's so huge but it's a 3.93 of course that's while stationary so you're going to get an even lesser value when you're moving in fact let's have a look here it's going to be about 1.94 and after you fire the gun you're just going to be spotted instantly so do not rely on camouflage for this tank it has none now value wise this tank look this tank is a uh, undeniably underperforming tank in pretty much all areas except for its turret frontal armor and rear armor oddly enough and also the alpha damage and the penetration everything else is pretty poor on this tank having said that it is still a good money maker a credit maker you rarely need to fire premium rounds the shell cost isn't that much at a thousand per shell and it does 400 damage per shell so I really think that this tank is still very valuable. I think that it's a great tank as well if you want to learn how to play American tanks because you can utilize that good gun depression and that good frontal turret armor which a lot of American tanks use when they, well just the higher tier anyway. For example the M48 pattern, you know, the M46 uh, uh, pattern as well, um, you've got the high tier heavy tanks. Just a lot of these tanks use this strong turret armor and pretty weak hull armor so i think that this is a valuable tank so i'm giving it a 8 out of 10. so guys the total brand score for this tank is a cool 57 out of 100. enough talking guys let's go straight into a game and see exactly how the t34 performs so guys here we have nine months and it's you unfortunately playing in his t34 now clearly he's a pretty good player because he's got three marks of excellence on this tank that or he just plays it so much but i'm sure he's a pretty good player so here we also have a pretty exciting replay in fact let me just increase that for you um where we're gonna see him play incredibly incredibly well indeed so you can see that we're playing on i always forget the name winterberg and uh this isn't the greatest map for this tank because you want a lot of ridge lines and whatnot for this tank, but unfortunately I guess you can't get it on this tank, but that's alright. But anyway, he is going to take it a bit slower. He is almost top tier. This is a really good matchup for him. Um, there aren't many tier 9s on the enemy team at all, and so he can lull his way up into the city area and uh, be sure that he'll probably be fine regardless when he gets there. But anyway, guys, you can see he's just moving up. Again, here you can see how slow the tank is. It's really not a mobile tank in the slightest. In fact, that Yag target is probably going to have a, a better time moving up. But look at that. That was a very, very lucky shot because, as we know, the dispersion value of this tank isn't great. But the, the shown dispersion value actually isn't all that terrible. So he was able to snap a shot off there. But it, it is a bit rare that that happens. Probably over-angling there. But who knows? I'm a pretty shitty player myself. So, you know, I can't say too much shit about how he's playing. 
He is, I think, trying to utilize as much of the terrain as possible to go hull down. What is that tank? Yeah, that object 252U isn't going to have the best time. He knows he can penetrate that T55, T25, sorry, dash 2, which he does with absolute ease. So no issues there at all. He is still hiding back, not sure whether to move forward or not. That object 252U is side scraping very well, and he's going to have a lot of trouble getting through even the front of this tank but he's still able to do it. And that kind of just shows to you the penetration of this tank. You don't have to worry too much about not having enough penetration. With 248 millimeters of penetration, you probably have enough to go through even the front of that Object 252U. Mind you, he was shooting into the lower frontal plate, which was a bit weaker in general anyway. You can see that Object 252U is starting to get very scared. He bounces a shot from that T25 too. In fact, let's see where he does bounce it from. If my replay wants to let me. I'm not even too sure. You can see all the marks on it. I think it bounced off the hull, though, just that spot right here. So you can see that the armor isn't terrible on the front of the tank. It's just not great. And that uh, that Yagtag will have absolutely no issues going through the front hull of the tank, of the T-34, that is. So, so far, his team is kind of getting destroyed, although the, the, the scores are still pretty even. He does get penetrated by that T25-2, which goes straight through the side. And, of course, this is such a huge side with not very great armor, so can't expect to ever bounce if something's shooting right at the side of your tank. So he's just sitting around. He's pretty much the only tank defending this line or this area here in front of a, a whole plethora of tanks. You got that Tiger P, of course, but, you know... Tiger P really isn't that strong of a tank. But he does destroy that T25 too, which will make it harder for that Yag Tiger to come around and get a flanking shot into him or go hull down even. Because he's quite a tall tank. He does want to prioritize destroying that tank, but a really unlucky shot goes straight into the tracks of that IS-2. Anywhere else he would have penetrated and gone straight through, but unfortunately he just wasn't lucky at this point anyway. You can see that Yag Tiger is going to have to come around. He's pretty much hull down though, I guess. So it's going to be really hard to go through him. Then the T-49 gets hit. He tracks him and his team was able to get a shot off into him. And you can see that now his team is starting to build up around this area and realize that he's, uh, he's not going to do too well if he's there by himself. He does take a shot and snaps once just in the nick of time into that T-49. But that was a very, very lucky shot indeed. Kind of the name of this game, right? A lot of lucky shots. But you can see already he's already up to 2,753 damage, which is absolutely insane. He gets a side shot into that Object 252U and destroys it and takes it out. So, so far he's over 3,000 damage in total. So a very, very impressive game indeed. Now this Cromwell, I think, or this Comet... This Comet, sorry, has come around and is going to try and contest him, trying to push up, but it's going to struggle quite a lot to get there. Although his team is starting to fall around, fall all around, around him. So he's pretty much going to have to defend for himself now. But that Comet makes a pretty silly move and goes straight into the front of the T-34's gun. Although a very, very low roll there for only 325 damage. So that is quite unlucky for Nine here. Or Niner. I don't know what to call him, to be honest. He's not going to take that shot. That would be a very uh, silly shot, in my opinion, unless he's uh, desperate to get through. But so far, he's able to hold off the left flank, but his right flank will be quite difficult. That T25-2 is the only tank there stopping the T49 from getting to him, and that T49 has obviously got the nasty 152mm gun on it. That Yag Tiger makes a bit of a silly decision here, comes out, but... Or oh, he almost got away with it, but he didn't quite get away with it. And uh, Nine here was able to take away 390 hit points. So a just below average roll here. He's not worrying about the Comet either because he knows that the M4A1 Revelarise has got his back. And he does. That T49 is trying to flank now. Let's see what the T25-2 can do. And he can't do anything really. So he takes another shot and low rolls leaving... Leaving the Yag Tiger on 50 health. He could have taken him out if he had a bit of a high roll, but doesn't quite make it. And now he's getting completely flanked. He is completely surrounded. His commander has been taken out. And just look at the turret traverse of this tank. It is just that bad. Luckily, he has his M4A1 come around. And he takes a shot into that Lorraine, but he misses. And that Lorraine is firing premium rounds, so it's not going to struggle too much to get through the front. But he hits track of... 
of uh, Niner here, and the M4A1 does take him out. So he is incredibly, incredibly lucky there that he doesn't die, because that Lorraine could have come straight in front of him, unloaded his entire clip in the time that the T-34 would, uh, would reload. You can see now he's prioritizing that Yag Tiger, because that Yag Tiger has a big nasty gun on it, and that Lerva is going to have a harder time than the Yag Tiger even than getting through the front. And there you can see the T-34 does a boom and go, hits him with a huge, huge shell, but he's not going to let the t the Lerva get away with it anyway. And he takes out, oh, almost takes out the Lerva, and leaves him on 13 health. This is absolutely insane, but his artillery comes to the rescue and destroys that uh, Lerva. So very, very well done to you, Mr. Artillery. What's your name? I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but Puma... Very well done to you. Now he only has to worry about that T-49, but if that T-49 hits him, he can kill him without even having to aim because of the high explosive rounds. So he does have to be very, very careful. And if he gets flanked at this point, then he could very well be pretty much completely destroyed. So hopefully that does not happen. But you can see here, guys, he's almost done five or almost 6,000 total damage. So an incredible game so far. If he died here, it would be an absolute heartbreak. But let's hope that he doesn't die at all. all right guys anyway he's checking his flanks he doesn't want to get destroyed quite obviously and uh good on him for not wanting to get destroyed but there's still two t49s on the enemy team both nasty tier 9 tanks so um he's got to be very very careful here you can see that the t54 lightweight on his team is on the other side of the map holding off that flank so that's very well played and that gw panther is now here to help um, or I guess run away from those uh, incoming tanks, but he's also going to be a pretty big help. So there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. He's going up forward just to try and see if he can spot anyone or if he can destroy that T-49. Because if he even splashes him, he could really, uh, he could pretty much take him out. I mean, not splash him, but anyway, if he gets a penetrating shot, then he has no worries in taking out those T-49s. But you can see he's being quite, uh, quite cautious here. The enemy T-49 has been spotted, but there's still one T-49 that has not been spotted. So he does have to be very, very, very careful indeed. So he's edging his way up. Not intentionally. Again, guys, the mobility of this tank really isn't that great at all. But he's probably shitting bricks right now because he, uh, he's done so much damage and uh, he's done so well this game. He wouldn't want to get destroyed at this point. I know I certainly would want to. He goes forward trying to spot. He does spot him, but he doesn't quite get him. And that probably means he's been spotted. And yes, he has been spotted. So that's really not a good situation at all. But we know where the other T-49 is at the moment. So both the T-49s are on the other side of the map. So he doesn't have to be too concerned about being flanked anyway because he knows where they are. He spotted the T-49 on the enemy team and he takes him out. A very good shot there. Quite lucky it went straight uh, where it was aimed at, but hey, I guess you can't complain there. And now he doesn't have to deal with too much in terms of the enemy team. He's got three artil He's got two artillery that he has to worry about um, and one tier seven medium tank. But again, he doesn't really, really have to worry about that. He's going to try and help his teammate out. You can see the reload of this tank. And there you have it, guys. I'll speed it up here so you can see what happens when he gets to the end to take out those uh, GW, or sorry, those two tier, tier, what, tier 8 and tier 7 artillery. I can't speak today. You see he tries to take a shot at the artillery. He does. And now he's going to go hunt for the last one. Obviously one shot. He doesn't even need to, to fire those HE rounds, but he does anyway. And he takes out the last one. So guys, as you can see, it was a very, very good replay. Very well done to you as well, Niner. I think it's a, a pretty insane game you had there. So as you can see, he had 17, 9, 1,798 base experience, but let's see exactly why. So of course he got the mastery badge, ace tanker, a bruiser medal, a fire for effect, a Pascucci's medal for destroying two enemy SPGs in one battle, a high caliber, and a top gun. Now looking at the team score, we can see that he did buy Far the most amount of damage on his team. 5,661 damage. Which is, is absolutely, absolutely insane. Also, shout out to that Yag Tiger on the enemy team. He did do very well with almost 4,000 damage as well, but it wasn't quite enough to win the battle. Now, if we have a look at the detailed stats, we can see he fired 20 shots, 
of which 17 penetrated and 19 hit the, the enemy tank. So you can see that, um, you know, the, the penetration of this gun is really, really good indeed. You don't have to worry too much about having to switch to premium rounds because you, a lot of the time you just don't need to. You have more than enough penetration as it is. So in total, he did 5,661 damage, albeit most of that was from within 300 meters. And he blocked 700 damage with his armor coming from a little bit from the um, from the frontal hull. I'm not sure if anything hit his turret. I don't quite remember, to be honest. He did block some as well with his track. And he did 900, uh, he did 900 assisted damage. So overall, he got almost 7,000 damage, and you can see he got 136,000 credits after spending ammunition, consumables, and repairing the vehicle. So you can see that this tank really is not an expensive tank to play, and moreover, it is a very, very profitable tank. So this is a really good tank if you want to pick up something that can really make products, uh, sorry, credits, and really print out those credits, because honestly, guys, this tank is really, really good at that. Obviously, this was a good game, but you can see the ammunition resupply cost really, really isn't that much at all. So again, guys, overall, 1,798 base experience. That's just absolutely insane. So very, very well done to you. Nine months and it's you sadly. I do appreciate this replay. And uh, anyway, guys, let's go straight back to the garage now and I'll tell you my final thoughts on this tank. So guys, what are my final thoughts on the tank? Well, should you get it? I haven't got it personally. I'm using a test account that Wargaming have been gracious enough to give to me. So I'm able to buy it without buying it in my own garage because I don't have enough money, right? <laughs> but um, I mean, if you want a hard hitting gun that you can go hull down in and pretty much be indestructible with the turret front, then I would definitely, definitely consider purchasing this tank. But if you need an all round forgiving tank, if you're newer to the game, then for sure just get the T26 E5. It is pretty much better than the T34 in almost every way except for alpha damage and penetration. And even the penetration is, you know, it, it's not that far off. So. Anyway guys, thank you so so very much for watching. If you did like the video, please do consider leaving it a thumbs up. It does help me out a lot. Anyway guys, thank you so very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.